Hey everyone, I'm Domingo Gomez and I finally finished my comparison with the iPhone 15 Pro Max, the Galaxy S24 Ultra and the Pixel 8 Pro. But before I start, I want to mention something important, and that is, in all three phones, all settings are by default. This means that on the iPhone, images are in HIC instead of JPEG, and on Samsung, intelligent optimization is at its maximum, but this is turned off. All of this to say that all the photos and videos that I made were basically point, and shoot. This also means that it is possible to improve the results of each camera, you just have to adjust them manually, but for a comparison like this, I do believe that it's fair and honest if we only use the default settings. With this being said, I do believe that all the cameras are impeccable and with any of them, you will be satisfied. Seriously, look at this photo for example, would you say one is better than the other? Or in this one? Did you choose the same phone as before? If your answer was yes, it's probably due to your preference for certain image exposure, because if you notice, one is brighter than the next one, which changes a little bit your perception of quality of a certain photo. But if I go back in this one and I adjust the exposure and saturation, you can see how they can look similar to the iPhone. This is something that usually happens more in environments with shadows or simply darker. But if we switch to the telephoto lens, you can see how the Galaxy gets closer to the realism of the pixel, while the iPhone is still has a higher exposure. Sometimes the iPhone's photos verge on the overexposure, but if you notice in this one, it's actually the Samsung that it's overexposed, also with the wide-angle lens. But if we switch to the telephoto, the iPhone and the Pixel maintain their color profile and exposure, but the Samsung does not. And the same thing happens again in this one, where Samsung has slightly overexposed the image, while the iPhone has a blue cast. But when we switch to the telephoto lens, the results are even better than those of the Pixel. All of this to say that Samsung is a little bit less consistent than the others. Sometimes it turns oranges into yellows for no apparent reason, and other times its white balance destroys what could have been a beautiful photo. But on many occasions, it also gives us a great balance between the other two phones. There's also a clear difference between the iPhone and the Pixel, and you have to choose what do you prefer, a more realistic colors, which the Pixel gives you, or something a little bit more eye-catching. In any case, let's talk a little bit more about the secondary lenses, which I do believe are quite important. The wide-angle lenses follows the same color and exposure line as the main sensor, but we can also use it to take micro photos, and without considering the color disparity on some occasions from Samsung, I would say that all of them do an excellent job. With the X5 telephoto lens that they all have, I would say Samsung takes the lead, mostly because photos look a bit more defined than the others. In in this example, if we zoom in, you can see how the iPhone completely loses and the pixel softens a bit more. But in my opinion, it has been quite a downgrade from the 10x zoom that we had with the S23 Ultra. With the front camera, the Galaxy also give us excellent results. I do like the skin tone a little bit more on the iPhone, while the Pixel is perhaps a bit more aggressive in its contrast, which doesn't look so good in some situations. But come on, they're all good for selfies. At night, the truth is that the Pixel disappoint me once again. Both the iPhone and Samsung give us photos with good details and colors, but the Pixel lost focus during the shot on two occasions. But if I had to choose one? It would be the iPhone, and only because it has a better white balance. Having said all this, I do believe that it's quite easy to characterize each of these cameras. If you're looking for the most realistic results with good contrast and dynamic range, go for the Pixel. If you want something more eye-catching with more exposure and saturation, the iPhone does it well. But if you're looking for the most versatile camera with its secondary lenses, well, the Galaxy is for you. However, when we move to video, things do change a little bit, you know, but at the same time, they keep the same ranking as before. I know I'm being quite vague right now, but with the examples that I will give you, I'm sure you will understand. If you look at this video, for example, the Pixel maintains the shadows a little bit more, followed by the iPhone, while Samsung overexposes it. This is something I've seen happening many times in many shots that I've recorded with the three devices. The dynamic range and shadows of the Pixel are unbeatable. While the iPhone doesn't do badly either, but tends to lighten the shadows a bit more, while the Samsung well, <laughs> this is a problem I've seen since the S23 Ultra, and although it's a little bit better this year, the truth is that it's still present. And mind you, it doesn't matter the angle you're in or anything, 
if there's a bit of light, the galaxy is not able to compensate unless you touch the screen and reduce it manually. This feels like a problem Samsung doesn't want to solve because it's very easy to reproduce in an environment like this in which the pixel is the best without any doubt. I mean, just look at this recording with the telephoto lens of the 3 and notice how well the pixel adapts to the scene, to the shadow, to the light. I mean, it's just great. With the front camera, what surprised me the most was the different skin tone that we get with each one of them, especially the iPhone, which created this slight green for some reason. Although in low light or backlight, the pixel loses some definition, while the iPhone does keep a decent quality. And just to end this comparison, I wanted to do a video in order for you to listen, okay, the microphone of all of them. This is the iPhone 15 Pro Max recording outside. This is the Galaxy S24 Ultra microphone, which I think it has improved a lot. And finally, well, my favorite, as you might have seen all around the video, this is the Pixel 8 Pro. I really like it. We have reached the end of this comparison and to be honest, my opinion hasn't changed. The Pixel keeps being the phone that I like the most. The iPhone would have been my second option, you know, just because it's the best one to upload to social media and the photos and videos that it gives us are quite nice for these platforms. While the Samsung, well, it was the worst in my comparison, I do believe it's the worst of the three. And you know, this comparison are always a little bit biased and me personally, I really love the Pixel and the results it gives us. If you wanna pick it for yourself, check the photos, decide which one do you prefer, and then based on that, you know, reach a conclusion. But anyway, if you wanna share it or any other opinion, you can do it in the comments. I see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao.